what about this r r minus q and r in bijection with each other are these two in bijection with each other does anybody know how to do this okay i'm i'm going to write down yeah so uh, let us start with this all of you understand disjoint union okay so r disjoint union q is uh, is equal to yeah r minus q disjoint union q disjoint union q i simply partitioned reals into irrationals and rationals and then there is one more copy of rationals now using associativity of disjoint unions well i can simply write it down as r minus q disjoint union q disjoint union q any problem with this yeah i simply shifted the parenthesis from here to there it's disjoint union ultimately doesn't matter now look at the parenthesis on the right hand side q disjoint union q q is a countable set so finite union of countable sets is and these are both countably infinite so therefore their their finite union is countably infinite again so therefore this is in bijection with r minus q disjoint union just one copy of q why should i write two it is again countable so therefore i can write one and which is in bijection with real numbers because i simply put those rational numbers back in yeah magic similarly yeah i can start with r minus q and take out one more copy from I, i can start with real numbers i could have started with real numbers and taken out two copies of rationals like two countable subsets and done the same thing yeah so similarly prove yeah prove r minus q and r have the same cardinality basically if your set happens to be uncountable then it doesn't matter if you take out a countable subset of it your cardinality is not going to change your size is not going to change you will still remain in bijection with that set yeah that's this is the argument yeah this is simple argument as long as you know that i mean i haven't written the reason but hopefully you wrote it down on in your notebook that q disjoint union q is in bijection with q because finite union of countably infinite sets is again countably infinite okay i'm going to use this particular argument now yeah and i'm going to tell you something different and hopefully interesting so now i want to talk about functions from natural numbers to natural numbers so if you remember on the last slide we talked about functions from natural numbers to two so using csb theorem we had this uh we showed that using csb theorem all the points in on this i mean all these sets in this diagram they are equinumerous with each other correct because all of them are inclusion inclusion inclusions or injective functions now what can we say like functions from n to 2 yeah that seems to be a smaller set than functions from n to n 
yeah because we have sequences of natural numbers rather than just sequences of zeros and ones okay so so uh, this is uh, i mean let me phrase this question is this in bijection with functions from n to 2 so clearly functions from n to 2 are functions from n to n because I take a function yeah I take a function from natural numbers to 2 I can map it to a function from natural numbers to natural numbers by doing exactly the same thing yeah I mean maybe I will call it f bar but f bar just takes n and maps it to f of n so the image of every such function is just going to lie inside zeros and ones so this is extension of codomain extension of codomain yeah this is extension of codomain because the function is a triple it is domain then rule and codomain huh no i'm saying the actual value is still f f bar is the name of the new function because it has different do codomain but what does it do the rule is still f right the domain is natural numbers codomain is different the domain is natural numbers codomain is different but the rule is still the same so it will still map to 0 or 1 okay so uh, clearly one side you have now you have to show the other side that functions from n to n well they have to map inside functions from n to 2 in an injective fashion yeah clearly this is subset yeah by extension of codomain this is a subset which means there is an inclusion between them so now we just need to know the other part so uh, note that functions from n to n is equal to functions from n to n minus x disjoint union x yeah so this is x uh, where x is the set of functions I mean should I call these functions as sequences are you happy with that it's a function from natural numbers to natural numbers so it's a sequence of natural numbers indexed by natural numbers okay so it is the set of se finite sequences or or maybe uh, maybe uh, I should be more careful the set of sequences ending in 1 0 0 0 dot 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 so basically I am just removing those sequences which end at 1 0 0 0 0 so which, which means these are just finite sequences correct sequences which end at 1 0 0 so therefore their length is actually finite and the last non-zero entry is 1 so these are basically finite sequences so x is in bijection with finite sequences the set of finite sequences of natural numbers and hence it is also in bijection with natural numbers we have shown this set of finite sequences are in bijection with natural numbers this is like p fin argument yeah finitary power set argument okay so so far so good so 
what we are going to show yeah uh, we will show that this particular set will map into real numbers <coughs> injectively okay all sequences which do not end in 1000 it will map injectively into real numbers between 0 and 1 yeah and then our argument will be complete because see this this function this maps in, inside the interval 0 1 0 1 is same as functions from n to 2 okay but you will uh, say that okay we haven't shown that this full set functions from n to n maps inside that but the argument is just like this even if you remove countable set it doesn't really matter you are still in bijection with your original set and the argument that we will use to prove this un red underlined set into real numbers is that of continued fractions okay so every rational number has a continu unique continued fraction which is finite and which doesn't end in one and every irrational number has a unique continued fraction which is infinite okay so that's the way we'll prove this okay so now we are going to look at uh, so we our question is whether the set of functions from natural numbers to natural numbers what is it in bijection with yeah we want to show that it is in bijection with the set of real, real numbers but for that we are going to use a very interesting technique called continued fractions from number theory there is an alternate proof which we'll see uh, after some time but first re recall that real numbers are in bijection with the set of uh, with any open interval in real numbers 0 1 in particular then 0 1 is in bijection with close 0 1 as well open close semi open semi closed so for this particular purpose i am going to use semi close semi open interval it contains 0 but not 1 and uh, then this functions from n to n what we have seen that we are removing a countable set from that so we are calling that countable set capital x and that capital x is the set of all those functions from natural numbers to natural numbers where for some n i mean from some point onwards it becomes 1 0 0 0 0 yeah it's a function from natural numbers to natural numbers it's just a sequence of natural numbers indexed by natural numbers and it is eventually zero and just before it hits zero it's one so that's our condition now uh, we have already seen that this kind of set is in i mean that it's essentially fine set of finite sequences of natural numbers okay so we are removing this so functions from natural numbers to natural numbers is in bijection with this set minus x we have also seen this proof so what is this technique so we are going to start with some real number which could be 0 or it could be anything between 0 and 1 and we are going to associate to it one particular sequence of real numbers called its continued fraction okay we are going to say that the integer part is b then our next sequence is a0 a1 a2 and dot 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 and i will show you how to construct this, this sequence via this example so consider the number 13 by 5 is it a rational number or irrational number it's a rational number correct so 13 by 5 you can write as 2 plus 3 by 5 now when you write 3 by 5 whenever you get a number less than 1 you have to invert it and invert it in the denominator so then you get 2 plus 1 over 5 by 3 now look at just 5 by 3 it has got some integer part namely 1 and then some fractional part namely 2 by 3 so you can write 5 by 3 as 1 plus 2 by 3 now 2 by 3 is again a number which is smaller than 1 so you invert that so you'll get 1 plus 1 over 3 by 2 now 3 by 2 again has some integer part namely 1 and then it is 1 by 2 so 
now we have obtained the look at the whole expression 2 plus 1 uh, over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2. Now, I am just going to collect all these integers which are circled. Yeah, we are getting 2 colon semicolon 1 comma 1 comma 2 and then eventually it is 0. We ended this process. But we could have also gone one step further and said that this 2, yeah, 1 over 2, this last 2 can be written as 1 plus 1 over 1. So, we obtained another continued fraction expansion for the same number, namely 2 semicolon 1 comma 1 comma 1 comma 1. And this is the expansion and, and it, you continue it with zeros. This is the expansion which contains 1 and then eventually zeros, 1 0 0 0, that kind of expansion. So, there are two different continued fraction expansions for the same rational number. Now, this will always be the case. So, therefore, we discard this one thing and we keep only the one which does not end in one. It is a finite continued fraction expansion which does not end in one. We keep that and we discard the other. Okay, that is why the stick mark and cross. Okay, now, we do not uh, just do it. I mean, I originally said we take a number from 0 and 1. What will happen in that case? this number b, the integer part of the original one that will turn out to be 0. So, that we are safe to say we are only working with a sequence of natural numbers. Yeah, because the integer part for a given real number that could be either positive or negative, we do not want to get into that. So, we restricted our attention only to 0 and 1. What will be the continued fraction expansion of 0? It is just the constant 0 sequence and for 1 we are not asking for it. So, this b will always be 0. Well, let us look at one more ex example. So, we saw that rational numbers have got two different continued fraction expansions and we are choosing only one of them. Now, let us look at number pi. You know that pi is not rational, it is irrational. Now, what can we do with pi? We take pi is equal to 3 plus pi minus 3. Now, pi minus 3 is a number, what is it approximately, do you remember? 0.14, okay. So, this is less than 1, its absolute value is less than 1. So, we can always invert it. So, then we can write a pi equal to 3 plus 1 over 1 over pi minus 3. Now, 1 over pi minus 3 is a number bigger than 1 because its multiplicative inverse was smaller than 1. What is its integer part? Well, if you do not have a calculator, then you, you will not know how to do it, but I am giving you this, uh, this expansion anyway. Okay, thanks. It is 7, correct. So, one, uh, 3 plus 1 over 7 plus dot 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 and actually, uh, I mean, I have just uh, taken this value from the internet. It is 3 semicolon 7, 15, 1, 2, 92, 1, 1, 1, 2 and dot 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 and it will continue. Yeah, it will continue indefinitely and that is a guarantee. So, we are saying that every rational number has a unique finite continued fraction expansion which is not ending in 1 and how do we guarantee that? By Euclidean algorithm. We are, if you look at the expression for 13 by 5, the denominators are always decreasing yeah, in successive steps. So, therefore, it must end. And on the other hand, for every irrational number, now take it as a fact that every irrational number has a unique continued fraction expansion and it has to be infinite, yeah, that is the important part. And simultaneously, we saw that x is countably infinite. So, the map that I had written on the previous screen, yeah, the map, uh, the map from 0, 1 to functions from n to n minus x, that is actually a surjective map and as well as injective. So, it is a bijection. So, this is how I have proved to you that this set is in bijection with real numbers. Good. So, this is one proof that fun n n is in bijection with real numbers. Here is another proof that the same set is in bijection with 1 n n. Let me explain it quickly. 
yeah this is much simpler but i anyway wanted to talk about continued fractions so given fun a function from natural numbers to natural numbers its graph is going to be a subset of power set uh, sub, uh, subset of n cross n yes all of you know this but what is power set of n cross n well it is in bijection with functions from n cross n to uh, 2 we have seen this via characteristic functions then this is in bijection with functions from n to 2 again by the same exercise that n cross n is in bijection with n so therefore we have a bijection here but functions from n to 2 is in bijection with power set of natural numbers which we already showed to be same as a like equinumerous with real numbers so this is another simple proof understood this yeah i mean if you want to continue it like uh, functions from n to 2 obviously embed by extension of codomain into functions from n to n so this whole cycle again using csb theorem everything there is equinumerous with each other any doubts about this this is perhaps simpler yeah but by this method you don't learn about continued fractions okay so uh, we have finished this topic on equinumerosity eventually when we'll do order theory we'll come back to cardinalities and how to choose a particular cardinal